everyone. This is Mariah, also known as Mariah Amazing. And Yuna. Hey, everybody. Hey, y'all. And this is Melanin Voices. So I just wanted to just jump into it and ask Yuna what she did this weekend because it's super exciting. Um, I recorded my video. Uh, guys, I'm entering in a contest to win a culinary scholarship. Um, I'm super nervous because there are a lot of great candidates. So we'll see what happens. Um, but you're a great candidate, too. Ooh, ow. And then um, my mom surprised us, so she's here. And what else is going on this weekend? I'm going to the Strawberry Festival today. It's also the French Quarter Festival, but I'm not going to that. And what else is going on in my life? Um, I think that's what the Strawberry Festival just say it blanketly. We know I don't ain't from New Orleans. We don't know. <laughs> it's a festival. No, it's like it's like okay. So in New Orleans, in New Orleans, and then like surrounding areas because this one's not in new orleans but anyways so it's like a carnival basically but it's centered around strawberries so you know how you could get like um, funnel cakes where they have like strawberry funnel cakes they just put strawberries in everything and they also sell strawberries too um and it's also the french quarter festival which is like a bunch of music and little booths around so it's lit this what made you guys make your decision because you say not going to that one he didn't want to go to that one, so we mm. go. if we would have went, yes, yesterday it was raining, like so we couldn't do anything. So we're just gonna go to the strawberry festival, and I already bought a strawberry shirt, so I'm like, uh-huh. at this yeah, point, I'm sold. Yeah, we're going. Well, you go- what about you? Tell me about your weekend. Well, before we do that, you guys make sure we're gonna put the link in Yuna's um, contest entry in the description, so you guys can vote for her twice a day because we really need to get her out there so they can actually see how great she is. But, um, Ooh, so sweet. that's right. But, um, <laughs> well, how was my weekend? It's not busy. Like I said, I'm, um, doing some, uh, some future project that I'm working on for these past couple weekends. So that has been taken on my weekend, which is, I like doing it. It's just a lot. It's very time consuming, you know? So that's been, <laughs> that's been my weekend. And then, um, hanging out with Bay, and then, Ooh. <laughs> And then just chilling at home, you know, and just, um, yeah, that's literally my whole weekend. Chilling with Bay, chilling at the project, and chilling at home and getting things together, you know, for the podcast and, you know, other endeavors. So that's been my weekend and nothing crazy, nothing too hectic, but I feel like I haven't been sleeping in often because it's like, I feel like I have to get up for everything. So it's been, it's Y'all, been busy, she, but like good busy, I guess. It ain't been bad busy. Stuff I want to do. She has been so hard to get in contact with. Girl, like, shut up. She be texting back 75 hours later. Mind you, I I'm be like, sleeping. Bro. When I can get my little naps in, I be like, listen, <laughs> I'm done with the conversation. Let me take my nap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing, y'all. Mariah is an excellent communicator. Speaking of communication, that's actually our topic for the day. Plug that. Plug that. But um, but no, she's right. Yesterday, I, I like helped her edit her video and everything, and I was like, "All right, here it is, bye." And, right. to sleep, and she was like, <laughs> "I got like fifty texts." She's like, "I need help with this." I'm like, "God damn, I only go for forty five minutes." I need you. But yeah, that's what she's talking about. But we'll get into effective communication later. Let's hop on into Melanin Media. So um, I'm going to start with Beachella, like Ooh. we all know and love. It happened yesterday. It's Coachella, obviously, for everybody. He's like, "What?" But Beyonce stole the show, per usual. So I didn't get to see the live stream, which I'm absolutely so, so, so sad about. But I definitely seen the photos on her Instagram page. And everybody be posting them because it's Beyonce. And she came to slay. And she did. So, yeah. I'm really sad that I wasn't there at Coachella for her. I'm going to go find the link for you, friend. Don't worry about it. Please. But, yeah, that was... She looked amazing, per usual. I'm sure she did well, as usual. So Oh, man. She... She does it every time. Like I, I never noticed. I never, I've never personally known how great of a performer she is. But oh, she's great. you can say anything you want about her, but her performance is like on point every single time. Like she's every gonna time. give you one hundred and twenty five percent every single time. She's gonna give you your money worth for sure. Yes, you know. So she's not just gonna stand there in the seat and just like, you know what I mean. And that's cool. That's that's her style of way of doing it. But she definitely performs. The costume changes. Mm-hmm. You know the energy, and then she had seen she brought Kelly and Michelle out for like you know reminiscent of our nineties past, or not nineties past, but our nineties childhood, like growing up, yeah. Destiny's Child. That was nice to see. So yeah, so yes, Beachella stole the show. 
Um, and then <laughs> Nikki drops some new music. Did you hear her album? Not her album, but her two singles she released, Chung Lee um, and Bobby I, Tings. I've heard bits and pieces of it. Yeah, I think it's cool. Um, I seen every all the celebrities like reposting it and stuff. I was like, oh, okay, that's what's up. You think you liked it? I it took me a while to um like come around to liking it because I was like so like stuck in the Drake and Cardi B mode because you know how they released their she released her project oh, and Drake released yes. his song. So I'm like going back and yes. forth between the two. So when she dropped hers, I was like, well, I gotta listen. I gotta like hear what it is. And so like right. I kind of like skimmed over it at first, but I went back to listen to it. And now I actually like the songs. So um. I'm gonna go listen to yeah, this for you. I think you would. I think you would enjoy them. But yeah, um, and then I was scrolling through and I seen that BT is in the works of rebooting Boomerang. You know, remember Boomerang, right? The movie Boomerang. Boomerang. Eddie Murphy, Holly Berry, '90s movie. I feel like I've seen it once. And if you haven't seen this movie, you are not my friend because this is well, a classic. Hey, you. Don't let's not go there, okay? Because last you we're not gonna do Greece. Greece. We're not gonna so, do Greece. I mean, what I will say to you is, I've at least seen it. I've at least seen it. I just haven't been somebody who rewatches it. I'm not gonna like, put it on. And be, oh, Greece! I'm like, <laughs> nah. But I did see it a few times. Each time it came on, I watched it, but I wasn't like, oh my god, I live, I die, I stand for this movie. No, great movie. I just like not something I'm like. I have to see again. Like, I'm dying to see. So, again. are they going to turn it into a show or what? They want to, and I think that they need to let it go. I feel like this really? whole rebooting thing is, it was great for what it was. It it ended. Like, you know what I mean? Why do mm-hmm. we need a series of Boomerang? That's like, <sighs> remember how they made that Soul Food series? <laughs> remember the movie oh Soul God. Food? Yes. Didn't nobody remember. watch that because we already got what we needed to get from the movie. And that's right. what they're going to do with Boomerang. So, picture that. So full series, then picture Boomerang series. It just doesn't make sense. Some reboots are good though. Like think some about, are, um, but not all. She's got to have it. That reboot was really good. It was great. It was a good show. I just, I don't know. I don't know. This is not one of some. The- some of them. Some of them is okay. So, I don't know. It's like reboot era right yeah, now. Yeah, and it's just kind of weird. I'm just like, let let's get some original work in. Let's get some young writers, some fresh content in here. Like, I think we would all like getting something valuable from having some fresh engaging new content versus the same thing over and over again yeah you're right i guess yeah but that's just me i don't even want to talk about this last melanie media subject we could just skip over that that's just no what no Are you talking about- we're not gonna do that on this show i forgot <laughs> i was like wait do i even want to talk about <laughs> no we're not gonna do it we might as well brush over it. Come on. I didn't hear it, so I don't want to... Did you hear it? Yeah. I mean, I heard a snippet of it. I didn't hear the whole thing. Well, we we can talk about how you perceived it, but... I... Taylor Swift covered the classic Earth, Wind & Fire's um, September song. And as you all know, it's a legendary song. And I didn't hear it. I just seen the headline that she covered it. So I don't know, but I'm interested to hear what you thought about it. It was like take or leave like it was just like meh like it was like it was okay it wasn't why'd like, you do this that's what i was thinking I yeah did. like w- for, yeah what was the point but a lot of people were like outraged by it and it was just like it didn't bother me but i'm not finna listen to it <laughs> yeah i'm not outraged i'm just like what's the point of it yeah, like, you could have left that where it was you could have left that alone mm-hmm. that's I don't know. But nonetheless, um, that was Melanin Media for the week. Yeah, that's all I had to say for Melanin Media. So, you guys, if you have any media that you want us to discuss, please send us an email, okay? okay. Yeah, I've been like, this is a great topic to talk about, guys. Let's talk Let about us it. know. We need crowd participation around these parts. What the heck? Who am I? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm Woody. <laughs> but you have, good, you have the good idea that you would like people to um, participate. But yeah, so as we stated and get preluded to earlier that our Papa and topic for the day is effective communication. And I think, I feel like, it's first of all, it's always like going to be a part of your life. Communicating, whether that be through symbols, verbal, nonverbal, it's always going to be a part of your life. So I think it's definitely a topic to discuss um, mm-hmm. and something of importance. Um, but also just like lately and just like, um, more so these past few years, I've tried to take more heed to how I communicate with others because sometimes when something rubs me the wrong way, I'm like, damn, did they give a damn? Or when right. they're just not aware. I take it to heart. Right, I do as well. So I'm just like, let's talk about effective communication, what it is, um, how we can improve it, and where we're at already. So I thought it was really cool. Um, 
I got an article from the Scholarly Journal. Um, I will definitely link it below. And um, basically, the the topic of the article, the article's topic is what I said. Topic. The article's title, sorry, is developing effective communication skills. So um, let's just jump right into it. So I guess we should kind of. I mean, I feel like everybody would know, but I don't. Once again, for the communication, I don't want to assume. <laughs> So everybody knows what effective communication is. So I'm just going to go ahead and read off a definition okay. of effective communication. Um, yeah, you know, I'm trying to be nice. Thank whatever. you. Effective communication is defined as verbal speech or other methods of relaying information that can get a point across. An example of effective communication is when the person who you're talking to listens actively, absorbs your point, and understands it, and vice versa. So that's what effective communication is, basically speaking to others um, effectively in a sense mm-hmm. that they can understand you and you can understand them. So um, I looked up this quiz and obviously this article coincides with it, but I kind of want to talk about um, where we stand at on the quiz and what the quiz is about. So the quiz can be found on mindtools.com. And once again, I will link that and it's called the communication quiz. And it gives you 15 statements and it asks you exactly how you would place in these statements. One of the statements being, I try to anticipate and predict possible causes of confusion, and I deal with them up front. It ranks from not at all, rarely, sometimes, often, and very often. Pretty standard quiz. And then it gives three categories. So the score from 15 to 35, 36 to 55, 56 to 75. And 15 to 35 is um, poor, pretty much. 36 to 55 is good, and then 56 to 75 is excellent communication. And so... um, I will just pretty much say what my rating was for effective communication. Mine was in the 36 to 55 range, which was, I got, I got 55. So I was like right on the cusp. Jesus Christ. Dang, chill out. Mm-mm, you got some I was one point on away from 56. Mm-mm-mm. It's like, I'm just playing. I ain't judging you, girl. I'm so sad. <laughs> but basically what it says is you're a capable communicator, but you sometimes experience communication problems. Take the time to think about your approach to communication and focus on renewing messages effectively as much as sending them. This will help you improve. And then, what was your score? So, <clears throat> um, girl, let's see what I got. <laughs> Stop. Um, 61. Dang, that's good. It's excellent. It's I'm an excellent communicator. That's great. Which I be trying to tell everybody, it ain't me, it's you. Okay, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> playing but not playing. So tell us what tell us what that um that category reads. Okay. Um, since I'm um it's I'm an excellent communicator. You understand mm-hmm. your role as a communicator both when you send messages and when you receive them. You anticipate problems and you choose the right way of communication. People respect you for your ability to communicate clearly and they appreciate your listening skills. Yeah, I can agree to that. So I personally think I think I'm a I think I'm a great listener. Mm-hmm. Like I know how to just sit there and when people are talking to me, just listen and not interrupt them. And you know when your friends ask you for your advice, they have these long stories about what they're going through. Sometimes people often interrupt and be like, Well, I think mm-hmm. you should do this and I think you should do that instead of taking the time to let them finish and then be like, Okay, give me more background about it or I understand what you what you're going through or whatever. I think I'm a good communicator. I mean, of course I have things I can work on, um, but I think I'm, I'm a good on the communication. According to this quiz girl, you are an excellent communicator. Hello. Hello. But yeah, I think that's a main portion of communicating effectively is listening. And I want to just, um, and in the article that I mentioned, developing effective communication skills, being an active listener is one of them. Um, It says in the Mm -hmm. article, the starting place for effective communication is effective listening. Active listening is listening with all of one's senses, says physician communication expert Kenneth Kahn. It's listening with one's eyes as well as one's ears and the years. So they're like your, you know, knowledge base from your years. Um, Listening can be accommodating. For example, don't have a conversation when one person is standing and one person is sitting. Make sure your eyes are at the same level. Eliminate physical barriers such as the desk between you and the other party. Acknowledge the speaker with your own body language. Lean forward slightly and maintain eye contact. 
a boy crossing your arms, which conveys a guarded stance and may suggest arrogance, dislike, or disagreement. And I understand that sometimes you can't eliminate a desk. You know, you're talking to your manager. You guys have like a desk in between the two of you. Sometimes it's, you can't do that, but you definitely can always listen. Um, mm. Uncross your arms. Um, there's just certain ways that you can make sure that you're being being in the moment and listening to what they have to say and giving a message of that you actually care to hear what they have to say. This this section of the article was actually one of my favorites because um, mm-hmm. I don't know where I learned this at, probably in school, but they teach you when you're communicating with a child, for instance, and you want them to, you know, tell you something or they, they went through something and you're trying to get to understand what happened to them. You have to meet them on their level. So instead of being a an, an adult and like standing over them where you're, you know, um, putting some type of fear in them, you should like, you know, not get on your knees, but, you know, lean down or maybe sit down, you know, and let them talk to you so that they don't feel so like that, that barrier between you two. They, they can kind of see you as an equal almost. Literally physically get on their level. <laughs> so some of y'all probably be like, uh-uh, I am not my child's equal, but for the, like in these type of instances, you need them to you know, feel comfortable with talking to you and not feel like this is an authority figure. I can't be honest with them. I can't tell them what's going on. I'm scared. Right. I see what you're saying. Basically, physically get on their level. <laughs> physically. Yeah. I'm not saying mentally, yeah. spiritually and all that. We're saying physically yes, be on right. their level mm-hmm. and in order to have effective communication, because that's how you're going to break those barriers between you and whoever you're speaking with. Mm-hmm. Well, one of the ways, right? One of right. the ways. So, yeah, I thought that was really interesting in the article when it says that. So, I guess I kind of want to just jump into, like, do you feel like you communicate effectively? I know that we kind of went over, like, what our score was, but do you truly feel like you do communicate effectively? Um, I have I have a lot that I can work on as a um, communicator. Like, what I learned from the article um, was that if you feel like you're about to say something, because I'm a, I'm a good communicator, like, with friends or coworkers, but when it's like relationship like mm-hmm. it's kind of it's kind of hard for me to just sit there and listen to you like lie say what you- <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> I'm, with you. I'm with you <laughs> oh, basically God. though seriously like it's kind of mm-hmm. hard to sit there and listen to that bull crap so I've learned <laughs> from the article, like, if you feel like you're finna say something, take a deep breath or have a sip of water because that'll stop you from being, like, like just going off. Right. So, um, and also crossing my arms. I do that all the time. Just not even, like, that. the fact that I'm closing myself off. Like, sometimes I'm cold or that's just, like, my comfort stance. So, I, I have to learn to not cross my arms as much. And um, also, I learned that if you, from the, the article kind of almost contradicted the uh the quiz because the article says that you should not think about what you're gonna say next Mm -hmm. while somebody else is talking because that's kind of like multitasking and that means you're not listening so i have to learn from that and what else or something else Um, oh that's my next question too (laughs) Ah, my next question you just said it no no that was my next question you didn't answer it basically but you listen before you respond or formulate a response as you're listening. See, sometimes I sometimes I forget what I'm going to say next. Mm-hmm. Like if somebody's throwing you so much information, like there may be points in between where you might want to jump in and say something. Yeah, yeah. But if they finish their statement, you forget. So I have to find out like what is the best way to kind of remember my points that I want to say mm-hmm. without interrupting. So maybe I'll write them down or like something, but yeah. But I do, I do listen. I do, I do listen to most people now. My relationship, I uh, maybe I need to get a little better at that. But listen, yeah. listen me too. Yeah. Um, but and you, you ask me the last question, and then I'll ask you. Yeah, for sure. The last question that I had outlined okay. was: Are there ways you can improve your communication? Like, what are the specific ways? Like, this is number one I can improve. Number two, number three that I need to do, like as of right now, like to starting today. Yeah. Um maybe with my messages, like my text messages. I hate um, texting. So one, <laughs> one of the points of being a good communicator is that you um 
so most of the time I come off as illiterate and most of sometimes I like correct myself, but sometimes I don't even read the message until the person is like, wait, what? So I could do, I could do a lot better at reviewing my messages or emails before I send them. Um, and what do you think I could work on as a communicator? We communicate. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do I that. mean, I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. I don't know. Like, I feel like you're a pretty good communicator. I also probably feel that way because we have the pretty much the same type personality. So right. Exactly. Exactly. Me telling you this is not very helpful because. Yeah, you're right. We, commun- we probably communicate similar. Obviously not the same because you're excellent and I'm good. So. <laughs> <laughs> probably, not, probably not the exact same but i don't feel yeah it's like i can bad. respond to text messages because so, uh. sometimes i'll be like i'm not in a mood to respond to this like group messages i definitely don't respond right. in all the time i definitely leave the conversation yeah when some people give like these i don't know sometimes sometimes i don't see messages and sometimes i just ignore them so i could i could do better at that yeah you know? no i feel you yeah. okay well at least you know exactly right. what you're aware of and how to go about fi- fixing it so people are like, right. yeah, this is just me though. So, right, I, I am who I am. You accept, take me or leave me. I'm gonna okay. leave you. <laughs> One man's trash is another man's treasure. It's like, okay, trash. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Kidding. Do you feel like you um communicate effectively? Kind of. Explain. I would say kind of because there's ways I, I, okay, so there's ways I can improve the way I communicate. But I'm aware of that. You know what I mean? Like, I'll have a conversation with somebody and I will replay this shit a thousand times and be like, damn, I could have did this, this, this. Yes. If we're in the same vicinity with each other, I'll come back like, damn, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> like, Or I didn't mean to say that. Or my bad on this. Or can you explain this to me? If we're really that close. Like, if I'm with my parents and we're just having a discussion. Because I do speak to my parents. We have an open communication. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, damn, like. I shouldn't have said it that way or did I come off this way? I'm sorry or whatever. I'm not afraid to apologize. Mm -hmm. Like if it's perceived the wrong way and you, I feel like it may have hurt you. Most times people are like, girl, I don't care because we all receive things differently. Right. Right. So what I think they take as mean, somebody else is like, nah, you're just being honest. And I'm like, oh, okay, well I apologize for whatever. Cause I feel like I did this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I feel like I'm a good communicator because I can see where I did wrong and I'm not afraid to correct it next time. Right. But do I feel like I'm constantly doing wrong in communication? Absolutely. So I feel like there's a balance there, mm-hmm. but I understand it and I try to do better the next time though. I definitely feel like there's always a chance for me to communicate better than I did. Right. Um, yeah. So to answer the question, I feel like I kind of communicate effectively. So you have some room for improvement. Of course. We all do. Some room for growth. Do. Exactly. Do do you listen do? before you respond. Oh wait. Do you listen before you respond or formulate a response as you're listening? Yeah, I didn't put a D at the end of that. She's like, what the hell? Okay. Effective communication. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Mariah. Oh, dude, that's why you're the excellent communicator, okay? I'm just good. It's okay. I'm just No, fine. it's true though. It's, it was, um <laughs> I do both, honestly. Um, like you said, when relationships, I definitely I'll cut them off. <laughs> oh, ah! But this is the same thing. All the same thing. Two thousand seventeen. No, you don't do that. Please tell me you yes, lie. I, I cut them off. <laughs> cut a nigga off. When my friends, like you know, my best friends, thank God. Um, shout out to Jasmine Peters, Doctor Jasmine Peters, very soon. Cause she's going to school to be a therapist at DU. Hey. What? Ten more years should be done. But shout out to her because if I go to her with any problem, she's like, "Well, did you close? Did you shut down? Cause, or did you do this? You need to do this. You need to do that." I'm like, "Damn, okay, damn, all right." You know what I mean? Right. She would like tell me like, "Cause you do shut down sometimes. You do do that." And to answer your question, do you listen before you respond? Sometimes I shut down. Like I don't want to hear what you have to say, so I shut down and. I will literally not even respond to you after you get done finishing your conversation. I'm like, okay. I hate that. And I don't like, I hate doing that. I do. I do it sometimes though. When I feel like you're lying or I feel like you're making me out to be a bad person. I don't want to, I don't want to speak to you no more. I don't. And I need to stop doing that. So I would say I do a little bit of both. Sometimes I listen before I respond. And then sometimes I'm responding as I'm listening. So in my head, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to, as soon as I finish, I'm going to be like, all right. And I shouldn't I, do that. So I need to... I didn't do that in my relationship, though. And I noticed that. I don't do that with anyone else but my romantic encounters. So 
something along the way made me think that that was all right. And I need to rewire my brain to think, to know that that's not okay. That's not cool. Cause somebody did that to me, I'd be upset. You know what I mean? And I, I do get some people do that to me. So I need to stop doing that. And maybe somewhere in my head, I think that by me saying, all right, I'm getting them upset so we can both be upset. And that's really <laughs> fucked the way of thinking, but it's true. Yeah. You, you got to be you honest with yourself. With you. <laughs> Some people are not <laughs> honest. Listen, that's only romantically, but usually in other encounters, I'm just like, I feel like I listen before I respond. Some, sometimes I listen so much, I, I think I'm talking like, oh, did, did you, I'm like, oh, I heard you so well. Let me just <laughs> go over what you said, because I have to right. really let this settle with what you said. Um, I'll do both, and it depends on who I'm speaking to. It truly does. It really depends on who I'm speaking to. Um, and you know, this, the setting, I feel like if you approach me in a bad setting or a bad headspace, I'm not going to be receptive to what you say. Mm-hmm. So that could be formally my response as you're speaking. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to, you know, brush this off. Cause we're not in the greatest setting and they should have known that. Right. And that referred back to the article when it said a part of effective communication is I'll just read this little tidbit. It says for one-on-one communication, the setting and timing can be critical to communicating effectively. Is a chat in the quarter. Okay. Or should this be a closed door discussion? Right. In your office or over your lunch, just consider the mindset in, of the communication receiver. Defer giving complex information on someone's first day back from vacation, or if you're aware of situations that may be anxiety-producing for that individual. Similarly, when calling someone on the phone, ask initially if this is a convenient time to talk. Offer to set a specific time to call back later. I, which I think is, I feel like you do that a lot. Like if, like if you call me, like, is this a good time? And I'm like, yes. I, was you know what to, I, mean? I thought I, I, thought like I could do better at that. that. Like, I do call you in some... I felt like I call you and I just start talking and b- instead of saying, hey, is this a good time? Or sometimes... Like, yesterday, I was like, can I call you now? <laughs> like, have you ever yeah. talked to a guy and he's always like, can I call you? Can I FaceTime you? Like, but... um, Yes. Oh, or no. I guess I'm not that popular. Stop it. Yes, stop it. <laughs> so, one, one point that you said in the article, the... um finding a good time and a place so i have a you know i have my little stories in between so i have this co-worker and she so you know how like when it's really busy at work or you had a long day at work so when you have your lunch you just try yes. to be oh, away from everybody yes. bruh one time i was eating lunch like it was one of them days where i just look i'm on my lunch don't talk to me i'm on my lunch eating my food she comes stand right next to me but on top of me and use the phone that's right there when there's there's 10 other phones in the store so you didn't have to come stand right here there's matter of fact there's another phone across the across the room and she want to ask me about my life and and um what do i do outside of work and all this kind of stuff i i i'm not gonna lie i was kind of rude to her i was like a little bit of this a little bit of that (laughs) like she was like um it's just, it's just like there is a time and a place for you to talk to me. And if I'm on my lunch and I ain't talking to nobody, it's because I don't want to talk to nobody. Like I just right. need those those instances where I'm like alone and no communication is happening because at work I have to talk to people all day. All day. I have to be, I have to be mindful of my my tone, how my um my demeanor all day. I don't want to have to be aware of that in these thirty minutes. So leave me alone. Mm-hmm. And then even like. Even when we're not on break, like if I'm talking to a customer, she'll still come stand right on top of me and whisper something in my ear. Like, first of all, I don't know you like that for you to be in my personal space. Second of all, clearly I'm doing something. I'm on the, like I was on the phone one time and she wanted to come ask me, do I have a customer? Oh, Lord. You see, I'm on Lord. the phone. Don't talk to me. So maybe she needs to listen to this. Part. Maybe I need to <laughs> forward her this, um, I need forward this, a lot of this excellent communicator thing because, yeah. bruh, she got me. Okay, I'm sorry, y'all. I had to get that out. I'd be feeling some type. No, but seriously, I don't see this. She, she not like see your your body expressions or anything like that. Like, she, oh, like, I don't. She, I don't think she cares. I don't think she. 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 Uh, I don't think she can see body language. Like, I feel like she's not aware of it. Yeah, many people. Many people aren't aware. And I, for lunch, I have to go to either my car or to like a closed off office when I have my lunch. Cause I cannot <laughs> be in. Well, most times I don't like to be in the building, so cold off office isn't my first option, but most times it's my car versus being cold. You know how Denver has crazy weather. One day it's cold, one day it's not. So it just depends on the actual weather. But I like to get out of the office, and when I do get out of the office, I don't want you to ask me where I'm going for lunch because I don't want you to come. And I'm going to feel bad if I stay (laughs) here, and then you're like, can I come? And I'm like, no. If I offer, like, I mean, if I want you to come, I will offer. Like, I'm going here. Did you want to come? But don't try to... And embark in my journey 
out of the office. Because I need right. that time alone. Right. So one of my coworkers be leaving for lunch and we, we sometimes ask him like, where are you going? Not so we could go, but so he could bring us back something. And he'd be looking at us like, I'm not trying to pick y'all up nothing. Like, I'm not trying to do the nothing. So you de- people should definitely pay attention to people's, like, demeanor. <laughs> no, but for real, that's another part of the um, the actual article. One of the things says, many nonverbal cues such as l- laughing, gasping, shoulder shrugging, and scowling have meanings that are well understood in our culture. But the meanings of some of these mm-hmm. other more subtle behaviors may not be as well known. One was hand movements that he mentioned. Mm-hmm. Our hands are our most expressive body parts, conveying even more than our faces. Blank face, through it, theoretically expressionless, a blank face sends a strong do not disturb message and is a subtle sign to others to keep a distance. <laughs> Smiling. Blank face. Although a smile may show happiness, it is subject to conscious control. In the United States and other societies, for example, we are taught to smile whether we or not we actually feel happy, such as in giving a courteous greeting. One, I mean, not uh, one. Another one was tilting the head back. Lifting the chin and looking down the nose are used throughout the world as nonverbal signs of superiority. Arrogance is disdain. Parting the lips, suddenly parting one's lips signals mild surprise, uncertainty, or unavoided disagreement. And the last one was lip compression. Pressing the lips together into a thin line may signal the onset of anger, dislike, grief, sadness, or uncertainty. So be aware of your body language as well when you're speaking to others. I definitely have blank face. People be sometimes people talk to me and they look at me like, "Why are you looking like that?" I'm like, "I'm just I'm listening to you. This is my listening face." See, so I, I do have to be more aware of that, and I do um put my lips together. What you described it very well, but I do you know put my lips together where it's making that thin line when I'm listening to I'm like yeah. I do that all the time. I mean, it makes sense. So like I do have to become more conscious about that. Um, I mean, it makes sense to be able to have an actual good body language so i don't know you guys i just really felt like if we can all develop like effective communication then we can just be better off so last question are are there ways you feel like you can improve yeah like i said like i think that when i said like one of the things i think i can do is listen to more before i respond and you know romantically as well as my other relationships my life and not be so quick to be so offended by certain things because I will get so offended so fast. Like I called myself the other day when I was having a discussion with somebody and they're giving me um, <laughs> criticism. And I don't think it was constructive because they didn't give me like feedback on how I can improve. I just felt like it was all criticism. So I had to like stop and tell myself, don't shut down because that's exactly what I was going to yeah, do. I'm, yeah, I do that too. I felt like it was more of attacking and like, oh, you're bad at this, 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 this versus like, hey, you can do this. I don't care if you tell me I'm bad at something, but tell me how I can improve it. Don't say you're bad at this and you can't tell me how to right. do it. Right. That's like oh. make a sandwich and you're like, I don't like this sandwich because it has too much mayonnaise and it has this, is that. Tell me, I don't like this sandwich. Can next time, can you put less mayonnaise right. and more lettuce? Right. Like, tell me how to do it better because if you don't, now I feel attacked and now I don't want to speak to you any longer. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I found myself actually not shutting down. I just took a deep breath. And I took into what they said, and I said, you know what? I don't understand. <laughs> you know what I mean? Versus being like, you're wrong, and da da da, hoping that it would, you know, um, make for a better discussion. And they want to understand that I needed more details, but I didn't get that. But that's okay because I could have explained it more. But I felt like if we would have both just kind of listened to each other's like expressions and everything, the conversation could have went a little bit more smoother. Which is why I say, effective communication is vital, crucial. If you want to be a business owner, it's definitely crucial in that aspect. It's crucial. If you you don't want to be a business owner, you don't want to be an entrepreneur, you want to just work in a corporate office, that's fine too. It's still crucial. Mm -hmm. More Yeah, especially. Um, Mm -hmm. Because you're, you know, you're, it depends, like, entrepreneur or not, effective communication depends on your livelihood. Like, that's how you make your money. Um, Romantic, um, platonic relationships, whatever it may be, effective communication is key. So I hope you guys all read that article and take away from exactly what you need from it. And just to throw it out there, it was for people um, being successful in the workplace. But this can go throughout any, pretty much, these tips and tricks can be any aspect of your life, any relationship setting. So, well, it will say strategies for career success, but you can do this in any um, relationship in your life. Just, you know, so take a look at that. That would be in the 
um, description box of our podcast so you can actually see it for that week. And also the quiz, too, so you can see exactly where you rank. Yeah, take the quiz so we can see where you um, ranked at, so we can see how good. Yeah, and let us yeah. know what you rank at so we can read it on the show and, you know, see what you, your thoughts are on it. Because we definitely want to see exactly, you know. Or even guys. listening to us. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Listen to us. Right. What she said. That way. But no, seriously, that, that was the end of the the topic. Did you like that topic this week? You know? I loved it. I, I know that I have a lot of work to do in my relationship as far as communicating. Um, um I, I think I'm pretty good communicating with other people. I, I do get a little offended. Like you said, when people give me criticism, um, it's, it's hard. Mm-hmm. I may not show it, but it's like my heart be, my heart hurts. <laughs> like, dang, you crushed me. Oh, but I can, I can do better at that. So. I have I have learned a lot. What about yeah, you? no, I definitely love this. Um, the only reason I came up with this is because of that situation that I had. And I was like, let me see where I went wrong communicating. Because maybe I'm not communicating well. And this is getting, you know, um, not my point across. And I wasn't communicating wrong. It's like, no. <laughs> but um, I still want to be like, well, what are some ways? Because I've been having a hit in the wall sometimes with people in my life that I'm communicating with. And I'm just like okay, what are some ways that I can make sure that I communicate effectively with these people? Because it clearly hasn't been working as well as I would like for it to work. So maybe if I just decided to, you know, do these tips and tricks that this article is speaking on, that this could help. And I feel like these past couple of days, it's been a little bit better. Obviously, there's still room for improvement, but now that I'm aware of ways to go about handling it, I can start to do that. It's just all about being aware and all about knowing where you stand. And then going from there and trying to be um, growing in that aspect. So. Yeah. I'll start today. What you going to start today? I'm going to start being a better listener and not interrupting. Um, okay. Because we do have to spend, we have to spend a couple hours together today because I'm going to Strawberry Festival with him. So I, I have, I, I'm going <laughs> to pay attention to how I react to the stuff that he's saying. And do you think. <laughs> yeah. Do a little face. We was like, I'm gonna try, but if it don't go well, just know it wasn't me. I'm an excellent communicator. He may be poor. It ain't me. It's you. Okay, it ain't me. I need to make him take this quiz. No, but for real though. Okay, so yeah. I'm gonna go to Insta convos, and I really like Insta and Twitter for their ways of being able to convey a poll or whatever because I Twitter I like cuter a lot because Twitter um you get more options to choose from and I feel like sometimes answers are so complex that you can't just choose just one or two. It's not yes or no, it's sometimes in the middle. But I don't mm-hmm. really have a huge following on Twitter. So if y'all mm-hmm. can go on my Twitter and actually communicate effectively on my polls then it could be helpful. <laughs> Follow <but> me. That's- <laughs> Let's jump into Mariah's Insta combos because I'm losing snap combos anymore. Well, not as much as I used to. One of my questions to the audience was, do you feel like you know what effective communication is? And all of y'all, 100% of y'all said yes. Interesting. Hmm. Next question. Right. <laughs> do you like to respond or listen to... Uh, do you like to respond or listen to understand? What they say. Sorry. My question was, do you listen to respond or do you listen to understand? 17% said... Need to have my response. I'm oh, sorry. Twenty one percent. Sorry, said need to have my response, and seventy nine percent said I like to understand. Hmm. I think that's interesting. I feel like you should take the test and see exactly if you are excellent at communicating. Right, as good as you say you think you are. Right. Maybe you think that you are, because that's what I thought too. I was like, I know for sure I'm about to get an excellent range, and when I got into that good range, mind you, <laughs> I am. The highest, if I got one more point, I could have been excellent range. I could have been excellent range. But I wanted to be honest with y'all and let y'all know exactly where I stood. And I'd be fake. But I, Yo, I, I, I had to take the quiz twice. I had to take the quiz twice. And the first time, my score was like 65. So, and then it was 70. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, honestly, like, we change every day. So, you know, our response may be different from right. one day to the next. Who knows? But... I like this topic. So guess what? That means I'm a better communicator today. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, I definitely was <laughs> listening to respond to that one. But um, that's it, you guys. Um, I really hope that you enjoyed this topic. And if you take the quiz and, or at least read the article, let us know your thoughts on it and get back to us by reaching out to our 
email at melaninvoices1 at gmail.com. You can even reach out to us individually on social media, whatever you want to convey your message of you listening to the actual episode and the topic. Um, but for Black Business of the Week, I actually yes, gonna take it off your hands this week and say a Black Business of the Week that I have. Because usually Tell me about I don't it. have one as much as Una does. But um, so I know about the Black owned beauty supply store in Montbello, which is right next to the Walmart over here in Montbello. If you did not know, there's a Black owned beauty supply right over there. It's Walmart, a nail salon, and then there's a Black on Beauty Supply store right there. So if you haven't been there and you live in Montbello or Green Valley, you should head there. Um, but there's also another Black on Beauty Supply mm-hmm. store in Aurora. Um, actually, they just built it. And sorry, you guys don't have to excuse me because I exactly lost the link for it. And I do apologize, but I'm trying to find the name of it because it would be very helpful for you guys to like, who are living in Aurora? Like, everybody's living in Montbello and Green Valley. So... Yeah, let me see. I want to find it, you guys. Okay, here it is. It's called. Yeah, there's two now. Two that I know of anyway. There may be more. Who knows? Um, it's Shay's That's Natural Beauty Supply, and it's beauty over on Mississippi in Aurora. It's um thirteen nine eight two Mississippi Avenue, and I'll definitely put the address in the description box so you can take a look at that. But once again, it's called Shade Natural Beauty Supply. They have a Facebook page as well. So you can go see the reviews, see the products they have. They post a product on their page every day so you can actually see what they have in the store. What I'm looking at right now, if you like Echo Styler, Olive Oil, and Black Cast Oil Gel, they have it there. They have Shea Moisture there as well. Curly Kids line, the Organics line. They pretty much have everything that you would need. So... Go over there, support them. We know you got to buy your beauty supplies anyways. Might as well support a black business while you do that. Wow. And where are they at again? They're over in, off Mississippi in Aurora, Colorado. It's 13982 Mississippi Avenue. And I'll definitely um put that into the description box once again. The name of the supply store is Shades Beauty Supply. Okay. I'm so, I'm so proud of us, guys. We are coming up in this world. All right. We got two beauty supply stores in Colorado. That are black owned. That is amazing. That's big. That's huge. That is huge. That's huge. So definitely go ahead and hit them up. Go in there. Like I said, you have to buy supplies anyway. Why not go buy it from somebody look like you? Exactly. So, um, but yeah, that's it. That's all for my um black business. Did you have one that you wanted to talk about? A black business? A black business for the week. No, ma'am. Yeah. I'll let you have it. You did a great job. I'm so happy. Okay, well, good. Well, that was it for this week, you guys. You're going to have so much fun at the Strawberry Festival. So jealous. Y'all going to see me post, (laughs) baby. No, she's not, (laughs) y'all. But definitely go ahead and vote for you. And once again, we're going to link her actual link there where you can go vote for her twice a day, right? So from your phone, from your laptop, because you can't be from the same IP address, you guys. But vote for her twice a day. That's how much you can do it. Just make sure that you vote for Yuna. We're going to link the link here. We just want her to be able to go to this college for free yes. <laughs> on the scholarship. Hello, because I already got student lo- student debt, and I don't need any more. So help me help y'all. Okay? None. So she's a great cook. I'm not just saying this because she's on the show. She's actually a really great cook. And if you look at her video, you can see the, some of the dishes she's made. So Yeah, and if you follow um, me on Snapchat, I mean, uh, okay, I'm not going to go into it. Go ahead, continue. I'm sorry. No, why? Man, Snapchat was my everything, and then they did this change, and don't nobody be on Snap anymore, and I'm just like, oh, right. how am I going to... On Instagram. Uh, uh, I feel like I'm going to have to... I'm telling you, friend. I think I'm going to have to record you. my stuff on Snap and then upload it to Instagram, because it's, I don't like Instagram filters. Yeah. Like, they don't they don't give me You anything. don't even need filters for your food. It already looks good. But as far as filters, I just like... Well, I'm talking about for me. For me, I'm not talking. But about anyways, you're right. But yes, go ahead and yeah. vote for Yuna. Give you a little thumbs up. Beauty supply store and let us know in our email melanvoices one at gmail dot com if you took the quiz and the article and give us your feedback on that. Yes, guys, continue to be great and work on your communication. All right, you guys, we love you. Be chella. Be chella, stop. We love you. Bye. <laughs> Bye.